Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel today for a very special interview. This one is probably the most special of it all. I just had a birthday, and I couldn't ask for a better gift because today I get to talk to the man, the myth, the legend, Michael <laughs> Beach, and talk about what's his up? new project that's going to be releasing digital and on digital and demand and on iTunes February 4th, The Menace, which is a film that saw your name attached to it and i read the synopsis i was like "Ooh, this is going to be interesting i couldn't wait to check it out and we got so much to talk about but michael how you doing today i'm doing great brother i really am i i appreciate being here and um talking to you i appreciate it i appreciate it like i said this is a dream come true and i want to start off today by asking you know like i said i just had a birthday but not about me but about you that's the fountain of youth sir like i i gotta i gotta know the tips as i start to get upper uh upper in my age here i, I need to know a little bit about the tips about health uh, fitness you know your spiritual journey uh mental health and just how do you just continue to deliver performances at such a high level well first of all happy birthday Thank you, thank you so much. Um, uh, it's always fun to 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 get older because the <laughs> alternative is not fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. For me, I've always been an active person, you know, and I love to work out. And uh, you know, I try to. I don't always eat right, but I try to eat right. Um, which is so odd because, to be honest with you, I just found out that you know I had some blood work done, and I I have blood work drawn maybe twice a year mm -hmm. just to see where my levels and stuff are at but this time i had it done um with an ear nose throat person who mm -hmm. and an allergist and found out that i'm allergic to all the things that i love to eat that i've been eating my entire life <laughs> you know <laughs> salmon and fish and Listen. peanuts you yep. know I, I mean i'm totally allergic to those things but Oddly enough, I'm 58 years old and I don't, I haven't had any, they were like, oh, you don't have trouble breathing or you don't break out in this or you don't, you know, they sent me an EpiPen and everything. <laughs> and, you know, I'm supposed to go in and talk some more about it, but I, I'm like, uh, I'm not giving those things up. Those are great proteins. You know, I love fish. I have it maybe twice a week. I have eggs at least five times a week, you know, so um, so anyways, oddly enough, I just think that um, I, I try to stay active. You know, I have young children and I want to make sure that I'm around for them as much as I as much as I have say in it, you know, that I'm around and I'm healthy, that I can run around with them and play around with them. And when they when they enter college and high school, mm -hmm. um, because I, I, I have adult children as well who are, mm -hmm. you know, um in their 30s so um uh i i don't know i just uh, i think I, obviously my genes are pretty good for my for my mom understatement and, uh, so <laughs> pretty good so i got no you know i got no i got no qualms about it you know yeah i wouldn't mind being a little taller but you know it is what it is <laughs> Well, sir, you know, at any given time when you want to break the internet, you know, you post one of those selfies and just so show how ripped you are. And then I'm just like, well, I actually look forward to getting older. If that's what I can become. So, you know, I just needed to <laughs> get the secrets right now. But I will also say, Bro, too, I would say. Possible. I it's hope so. hard work, man. Every, everything, everything worth having requires hard work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um. You know, I absolutely uh, can also share the same sentiments about going to the allergist and the uh, the, the uh, note throws and ear doctor. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a Maryland boy. And I remember I went in there and it was like, yeah, you're allergic to crabs and all this soft shell stuff. And I'm like, I've been eating this stuff and I am giving it up. And I just have to deal with this at another point in my life. Because right now, any time. <laughs> you and I are on the same page with that, brother. Yeah. <laughs> so... Oh, but man, you know, you've been around for so long, so many roles, so many of my favorite roles and characters. Uh, Truth Be Told is one of my favorite series. Uh, but I, I just want to know with just so much experience and, and when you when you come into a role and you prepare and 
nine times out of ten you're going to be the focal point with within that casting because i you're well respected and just with a tremendous catalog so how do you work with other folks who may not have that same experience and you position yourself in a in, in, in a in a way where you don't outshine them or, or or you still give them opportunity to be you know present on the screen because you see that sometimes where folks are you know they're dominant and then when newer and younger cast members are coming about that they, they don't exist but you did a fantastic job in that in this film which we'll talk about in a second where i just wanted to know like what's the mindset when you go in there saying like i'm working with somebody new let me see how i can help them out right well you know my my main job is to enhance the script you know uh as as much as i can you know uh, you know it's all about storytelling and my my part of it is uh, is through this character and to figure out you know to know as with as much detail and specificity <laughs> that's a uh, as much of that as possible to to um help tell the story and when it comes to other actors I am, you know, we are partners, you know, so whether I'm working with, a, you know, an Oscar winner um, or somebody who is relatively new, my job remains to be, remains the same is that hopefully we're going to make each other better. You know, we're going to pull what we need out of each other. And the truth is the only way you can do that is by being the best you can be. You know, and sometimes with new actors, I never, like, I never speak in the past. You know, a lot of times actors will ask me, hey, how about, you know, what do you think of, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I usually kind of look to the director because that's really their job. Um, okay. And and oftentimes they'll go, well, yeah, you know, you, <laughs> maybe you can help this person and they they're asking you and you're yeah. you know i'm a director but you're an actor so actor to actor maybe you can help shed some light on yeah. on uh, what they need and so i i i'm always available for that but i never come in giving it that's not my place i feel like we're all um equals um in in all the jobs but as an actor it doesn't matter that I have this amount of experience and you have that amount of experience. We're equals and we're trying to achieve the same thing. So I have to respect that. So I don't just go, hey, maybe you should try this or maybe you should try that. Nah, I w I'll never do that unless yeah. somebody asks me, you know. Um, yeah. And when they do, I'm, I'm more than willing to impart whatever, you know, whatever knowledge I can give to them, you know my man my man yeah you know it's always the whole analogy i always say like if i was ever going to be like an r&b seeker and i had a song i would never put john legend on it or like bruno mars because i'm not going to get bodied <laughs> on my own song <laughs> so it's the exactly. idea like you're like oh michael's on, on, on this okay i gotta share scenes with him. oh boy <laughs> well you know what's funny about that is like when whenever you you know whenever i go up against and that and i say that in the kind of rhetorical way but whenever i know i'm working with somebody who is you know to me considered remarkable um it's just it it's a challenge you know because you go wow not that i want to outdo this person but i know their level is high and i need to i need to uh be the yin to their yang you know i need to step up you know what I mean? And I, but I it's funny because I often feel that way because because mainly what I'm trying to step up to is the material. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to make the material better. Yeah. But the added added superstar, not superstar, but mm -hmm. superstar actor, that just gives you a little bit more, um, you know, just a little bit more fire to yeah. say yeah this is this is the sandbox i want to play in you know mm -hmm. what i mean like if i were a singer and i was doing a duet with john legend uh i'm not gonna shy away from it i gotta yeah. i gotta jump in i gotta bring my shit because he's 
he's a bad dude. So yeah. if I'm intimidated and not able to bring my A game up, which may not be equal to his A game, but I still have to bring mine. And yeah. and I love that. That's what I love about what we do, you know? Yeah, I think a prime example has got to be Aquaman here because, you know, Yaya and, and Jason, you know, you're, you're automatically going to say, okay, that's going to be interesting. But the fact that the character sits there and steals the scene, I was just like, oh, we got robbed here. <laughs> <Just let me laughs> this you. is the story. This is the story and the character I wanted. We got robbed here early, but <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you, bro. For sure, for sure. Uh, but even with that, with so many diverse slate of roles in, in so many different genres, is there anything else left that you're wanting to cross off your list? And what ultimately convinces you to take certain roles? That's a good question. I, I like I w another thing that's so really um, powerful about what I do from my perspective is that I never know what's coming up. You know what I mean? Like we're talking right now and I'm you know, I, I got to go take care of my kids after I speak to you. But I I could get a phone call in five minutes or tomorrow and say, yo, these people are interested in you and so-and-so's in it, so-and-so's directing it, so-and-so wrote it, and it's shooting in so-and-so, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And the truth is, that happens to me every project. It happens to everybody every project. And I'm fortunate that I work a lot, so I, I find myself working with people that I never even thought about or thought, you know, not that I didn't like them, but I, I wasn't, I don't have a radar, you know, it's just, mm. I know that there's going to be a next thing and there's going to be somebody that I haven't worked with. I know mm. there'll be people on it that I have worked with, but there will definitely be people that I haven't worked with. And that's exciting. That yeah. keeps me going. You know what I mean? So there's no particular project always the the love of the unknown and what's coming up and i i that uh that's always exciting bro that's awesome and that brings me to this project I, I mispronounced it earlier but uh eminence again going to be releasing digitally um and also on itunes february 4th now my thing about yes. independent films is that when i see them i love independent films because mm -hmm. a lot of the times they're passion projects and a lot of right. the times, you know, you start to see folks who are who have traditionally taken certain roles, but actually get to do something they always been wanting to do. So I saw your name attached to it, and I said, "Oh, this is absolutely a passion project." And then you look at your yes. performance, and you said, "Oh, this is certainly special to him." And then I can talk about the opening scene in a second. But when being a part of this project, like, what did it mean to you, and how did you truly? make this character yours and is there any shall we say similarities within yourself that you embedded into this character well the 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 project came to me and usually how indies come to you because you know i get a lot of scripts come to me most that will never get made but um I read the first 10 pages and if and if I'm ready to turn a page to number 11 then I'll I'll read it but okay. usually usually it's not you know you just go ah, I see what they're doing but it's not it's just not for me so I'll close it and I'll let them know thank you very much this project my my kids go to this or went to before this whole pandemic they went to this dance um school and mm -hmm. my my there was another parent there that um, had this script and he asked my wife actually if I wouldn't mind reading it and uh, and that was uh, that was Carrie uh, Balesa and, and um, his wife Summer but so I read it and I was like whoa this is interesting I love this dynamic the 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 battle between you know what you know the idea of God and the idea mm -hmm. and science, science you know yep. so I, you know, that always for me, which I tell, which I tell young writers and even actors, that's always the, especially when it comes to indie films or short films, that's the indicator. What does the script say? What does this, how does that affect me? And 
I wanted to be a part of this because of that, but the script had some problems and I said, listen, I'll, I'll come aboard, but we have to work on the script. And then when the script gets to a good enough place, I think then I, I'll call some friends and, you know, we can get some, some decent actors in here, you know, right for on. no money. Cause that's yeah. the kind of film, right? Yeah. And, uh, and we did that. And to, to Carrie's credit, you know, he took a lot of, <laughs> he took a lot of hard notes from me and, <laughs> you know, he and his writing partner, they, they really, that first draft after my notes, I was like, okay, I'm in. All right. You know, cause he, you know, he, he changed a lot of stuff and he evolved a lot of stuff. So, uh, we, we became good partners that way. Even when, you know, I was like, dude, I'm going to tell you what I think, you know, and I did. And some of it he didn't like, but to his credit, you know, we, and, and we didn't, ch we didn't change everything I wanted to do. Mm -hmm, it was, mm -hmm. you know, so it was a collaboration. Um, and, and I so appreciated that. And I think, you know, so when you say it was a passion project, it was definitely a passion project and, and it's it's all due to him it's his credit because his first script is the thing that hooked me you know and uh, and i'll continue to do that i'll do indies and shorts as long as somebody uh has something to say that connects to me that i'll be there that's awesome that's awesome yeah you know like you said the first 10 pages and 11 page your hook for me it was the first two minutes and i was like okay let's see what this does i thought the visuals was amazing but then it was your opening scene making a statement which you know i don't want to spoil it for people because i really want people to check this out but also i do want folks to know that upon watching this film really have your hat your thinking cap on because this it mm -hmm. it it is super thought provoking and i also think you got to really pay attention to clues because even if you're not able to pick up on certain stuff um there there, there was traces of things that help you kind of understand certain dialogue and certain uh let me say science and and, and religion that's right. being applied into it so like it's a very fleshed out movie that leaves you to want to kind of do research which i'll talk about one second but um, yeah, that. pulling the pulling the gun out on the exorcism, and I had such a badass scene, and you really set the tone, and you really uh, introduced us to Jonah right away. And 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 for me, I wanted you to describe who Jonah is. Like I had my own ideas, but I want to know, especially with some of the dialogue that was really early in the film about what right. Jonah looking for something. And I want right. to know, like, is that more of a metaphor for something? Because I feel like that's like some type of relation that the viewers need to connect to in terms of Jonah looking for something. Is it right. like the whole what are we looking for as humans or, or 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 even as, you know, Christians or whatever your religion may be? You know, what what is it that when you say Jonah's looking for something? Because Jonah's not just a person to me. And obviously, if you know yeah. the Bible, then, you know, this is way beyond just what you right. physically are seeing here. So. What metaphorically can you say about this character, Jonah? Well, I I don't know. I, I'll not metaphorically, but but Jonah is a guy who, in in our story, he experienced something a few years before our story begins, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it has so basically destroyed his life. You know, because of this experience, and I won't get into that, right? But because of this experience, he has been seeking. He's been trying to find out if what he experienced was real. Uh -huh. If it's true. If it exists. If, you know, it, and, and he's not sure, but he, he knows it was real at least he believes it was real and he knows how to and so because of that it totally destroyed his wife his life and now he's become a guy who lives on this boat who basically stays on this boat mm -hmm. and is going out in this meaningless kind of job because he works on a on like a basically a party boat mm -hmm. um but he but he knows that location in terms of the longitude and latitude at a certain location in the water uh 
is where he may is his best opportunity to find the answers that he's been seeking all these years. And so he's been, you know, he's been going out there, going out there, going out there. This story, it starts out with, boom, these, these, uh, these astrologists, astronomers, sorry, um, want to go to the exact place that he thinks will get the answers that he's been seeking. Mm -hmm. And so he is, <laughs> he is so ready. <laughs> he's been preparing for this. He's been, you know, this is what he's been searching for. And, and this is, again, this is the, the battle between religion or God, whatever you, however you want to say it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. science. And Anthony Ruivivar, who plays Roman, who's my longtime friend, um, uh, where the two opposite sides yep. of the spectrum. And in the middle, you have Summer yep. uh, Balesa, who, who, who grew up in a religious home, but yep. she's also an astronomer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so you kind of have these two guys fighting for her to make a decision on where she, where she's going to go, who she's going to yeah. side with. And yep. all the things that start happening that they're on the boat is, you know, you can scientifically explain. Yeah. You know, but it gets to a point where, you know, can you explain this? Does yeah. this, is this science or is this something else? And that's, yeah. you know, that's why, that's what drew me to the story. I love and I just that you brought up Summer, her character, I feel like is sort of say the viewer's vessel because we're on yes. a tug of war battle of saying, well, it's Roman right or it's Jonah right. Who do we believe? Who's the bad guy? Who's out of line here? Who is actually being able to explain what's happening, these anomalies that are happening and with right. reasoning behind it? And you know, <laughs> that's why I can't wait to hear what the viewers are gonna have to say about it because <laughs> I think everybody may end up in different positions by the end of the right. film. One way or another, which hope is so. always fun. Yes, you know exactly. I mean? That's the exactly. Like, I, like we don't, we're not trying to tell you believe this. Yep, yep. Believe what you want to believe. We're just trying to present, uh, you know, a couple of different uh, perspectives. Yep, yep. Absolutely agree. And like I said, I, I went to go do my research a little bit, so I started to look up um, 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 in the, the Book of Jonah in the Bible, and I started to say. You know, I see the similarities in the story and how the story did, but in the script became unique in its own. But obviously, you know, there was uh, some direct correlations to what was happening in the Bible, which made me start to think, like, who in this story may be Yahweh? If you know this, if you know the the, the text here, who who was the mm -hmm. person that ultimately put Jonah up to this, or who was the the correct, uh, who was the the, the direct uh, opposite of him, which makes me think Ro Ro Roman, but. That's where science was involved, and, and and again, like it just creates so many thoughts. So many, it's right. so thought provoking, so entertaining. Um, I'm glad to hear that. Good, it's just a good, a, a good ride, and I, and I love the visuals. I just got to keep saying that visuals was just. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. I loved it. I appreciate that you enjoyed it. Absolutely. So, look, I'm not going to hold you up much longer. I know you had a long day talking about this film, but I do need to know what may be up in the pot cooking for us because you forever working, never a day off. Yeah, well, we, you know, it's, it's, uh, I've been, last year has been pretty busy. Um, so I did this show for Paramount Plus called uh, Mayor of Kingstown um, with uh, Jeremy Renner. Phenomenal and, show. Um, it's all out yeah it's it's crazy you know so i had i was recurring on that um i'm a recurring on a show that won't come out until i think september uh a netflix show called uh monster okay. about jeffrey dahmer oh. and um the take on that is so interesting because obviously we focus on dahmer but then we also focus on the families of his victims and wow. what it's done to them and my character is uh one of the cops who uh one of the detectives who interviewed him um once he was finally caught and who had to go to each of the victims families and tell them 
that their son or daughter, I mean, not daughter, but their son or cousin or whatever was a victim of Dahmer's. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's uh, you know, it's very interesting. And then I also did a film, uh, a TV series for BET Plus um, called um, Kingdom Business. Okay. With uh, Michael J. White. Um, My guy. Yolanda Adams. All right. And yeah, and uh, um, it's, it's basically about um, uh, the inner workings of the, the world in gospel music. Mm. and church you know mm. how they're pretty much one in the same yeah and um and i had a ball on that and that's also i think that'll come out at the end of the year but that that show kingdom business was um something that i really enjoyed i loved working with yolanda and um and we, we play husband and wife and um we had such a great time she's such a wonderful person yeah and so talented i mean yeah oof. the oh, music in the the music I, the piece I, is going to be ridiculous kirk franklin is also an executive producer and he did all okay. the music okay so yeah it's, it's I was, real i was about to say yolanda attached to something i know the music good but you kirk too okay now yep yep <laughs> exactly well, well my eyes will absolutely be glued for that to come out and all things you uh such a fan it's been a pleasure to talk about this film once again folks eminence that is going to be releasing itunes all digital platforms february 4th I, look, it's you got to do us a job, folks, and that you got to let us know your thoughts about the film, yes, your your yes. your your inner conflicts that you may have to feel. Because I tell you, it was tug of war for me and Jonah down the film. I was like, <laughs> I don't trust this guy. Then I'm like, you know what? He might have been right this entire time. And I was like, mm -hmm. ooh man, self reflection at the end of that film. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I'm glad it to, touched you, man. I'm glad it reached you, you know. Absolutely. I had to get up and walk around with my hands like this, like, man, I got some real value <laughs> waiting on myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it, nice it, to it, hear. it was a joy and it was a pleasure to talk to you. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Same to you, brother. Thank, thank you so much. And thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you around for more interviews and content very soon.